it is a remarkable story of forgiveness. Last Sunday, a gunman walked into the First Baptist Church in Maryville, Illinois, killing Pastor Fred Winters. The gunman is being held without bail, and now the pastor's wife is praying for the accused killer. Cindy Winters joins us now from Maryville for an exclusive interview. Good morning, Good morning Cindy. Good morning, Julie. First of all, let me thank you for speaking with us. How are you holding up? Well, you know, I think I'm a great example that prayer works. And uh, considering the circumstances, I'm doing, I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. You have two daughters, ages 13 and 11. How has this past week been for you and them? Well, it's been surreal, to say the least. Um, but we have been amazingly supported by our community, our family, our friends, our church, and just people around the country who have uh, sent their condolences and have just expressed their concern and compassion for us in beautiful and amazing ways. And we are grateful for that. And that, have, that has just made a, an amazing difference in our time of grief. I can imagine it, it being comforting. Mm -hmm. What are your feelings toward Terry Sedlak, the man accused of killing your husband? You know, I do not have any hatred or even, even hard feelings towards him. Um, we have been praying for him. Um, one of the first things that my daughter said to me after this happened was she said, you know, I hope that he comes to, to learn to love Jesus through all of this. Um, we are not angry at all, and we really firmly believe that, um, that he can find hope and forgiveness and peace through this um, by coming to know Jesus, and, and we hope that, that that happens for him. And what do you want to see happen to him beyond this as he goes through the court system and, and faces these charges of killing your husband? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't have any, any speculation or any idea about that, but I do hope that he finds peace with God. I hope that he comes to understand that God loves him in, in spite of his sins and that he can have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, I, I have experienced so much hope and comfort uh, by my relationship with Jesus, and I hope that he finds that as well. That's my prayer for him. And although you come from a small community, none of you knew Terry Sedlak, is that correct? Right. We, we did not know him uh, at all. Never seen him before. I understand you want to reach out to his parents. Why? You know, because in some way we have been united through this crisis and I have a desire when they're ready, I have a desire to meet them and to let them know that personally that I love them and that, um, and that I'm, I, feel, I feel in some way I feel their pain. I feel like we're united together in our pain and that uh, the same way that I have been comforted by others, I have a desire to comfort them and I find that by sharing together that that's the way that we get through these things and and, and, and that is my hope and my desire for them to know the same comfort that I have found uh, with other people and for them to know the same comfort that I have found uh, through Jesus Christ. Cindy, do you think the reality of all that's happened in the last eight days has truly hit you yet? Um, I don't think there's any way that it possibly could have. I think that it will hit me next month uh, in another way when I go and I pull out four plates out of the, the cabinet uh, instead of three when I go to set the dinner table. Uh, we were planning on going to Disney World next summer and when we go and my husband's not there, that's going to hit me again. When my daughters get ready to walk down the aisle at their wedding and their daddy's not there, it's going to hit me again. I think that's one of the things that makes loss so difficult is that there's no way um, to, to fully you know, get over it totally. Uh, so no, I don't think it's, it's totally sunk in, but I know that the same way that God got me through last Sunday, that he's gonna get me through next week and he's gonna get me through the next 10 years. Uh, he has been my rock and I know that when I get through those really dark, painful days, that he's gonna be there for me and he's gonna be there for my daughters and I, I'm counting on that. Where were you and your daughters at the time of the shooting? Um, I was actually at home. 
I had not made it to church yet. I come to the second service at our church. Uh, my older daughter was here at church, but she was actually helping out uh, with the childcare that day. So none of us, fortunately, were in the service to experience what happened, and I am so grateful to God for that. Yes. Um, so um, we were yes. not here. Cindy Winters, yeah. we wish you and your daughters peace, and we thank you. Oh, thank, thank you so much, Julie, and thank you for this opportunity to share with you. You're welcome.